I just want to let everybody know I've only got one slide, so if, if, I, if I look at all this together, I'm going to take it over an hour. So I decided to cut it down in just five minutes. So I'm just going to talk my way through it. Um, as most of you know, we are the home of the Western VA statewide address in the mapping project. We've had this in our possession since 2008. Uh, we take the work that some of the county address and coordinators are in the audience today. Uh, they provide us with the address points in the center lines that they use for their individual counties. And we host them on a website that is shared between uh, stakeholders at the state level and at the uh, county level. And, um, and we continue to work on that and I continue to preach to them to keep their data up to date because a prime example of what we just went through was back in March of 2011 when we had flooding and tornadoes strike the southern part of the state. Um, we did use data that Steve provided for us and Matt Sturge from Wayne County provided for us to show the uh, tornado path that went through Wayne County and potential structures that were possibly included in that. And then when we had the flooding that happened in Logan County a couple of weeks later, um, we worked with our hazard mitigation group to make aerial photography maps with the statewide address and the point structures for Logan County and along to center lines to show those folks who are going out to the field of potential areas that are affected by this. But we don't just do statewide address and mapping. We also, our mirror nature project we've been working on for the past couple of years is a broadband project. Um, as John previously stated, you know, we have done work with the, the Tony's office in the Geological Economic Survey on the mapping of community anchor institutions. Um, me, David Phillips, and Maria Simmental, we work together as a group um, every six months or so going through and checking the libraries, schools, police departments, fire departments, hospitals, nursing homes, uh, community workforce locations to make sure everything is up to date and in place. So when all this information is submitted by John and his group to the TIA, there are no major problems. And we've also been working with the Washington Broadband Technology Opportunity Program Grant, which is the one that's headed up on my boss, Rudy Jeanette, here in Charleston. We've been working with them on environmental assessment mapping, which is where we've been taking uh, coordinates for potential poles and anchors for broadband to be potentially going in and mapping them to show different agencies like. Uh, uh, I can't remember off the top of my head, but one that Tammy Coots is over with, the other cultural center, where she takes our information and she checks it to make sure there are no environmental damages taking place. And also the potential partners of this project as well, sees where all these poles and anchors are going into, so that way you know, everybody feel like they're supposed to be going. And um, I think the biggest issue we've got going on this year is, and I've talked to a few of my fellow state colleagues about this already is we're going to upgrade our servers for the address and the map and uh, we're also going to upgrade the portal system that we're currently using as well. We're in step one of that and hopefully the next couple of weeks we're be able to get this first through and get everything in place hopefully by the time of summer. Otherwise, that's all I got this time.